the last two years, it's been a privilege of mine to work closely with Dr. Rick Lance. I want to say, first of all, he's been as kind to me as an individual could be. And he's really watched my back. He made certain I didn't step in more ditches than I stepped in. But I'm just thankful for the help and the friendship and the support by this good man who loves Alabama Baptist, loves the Lord, and loves the work of God. We're just so glad to introduce today Dr. Rick Lance. that we had our S upside down. So we right-sided that, and therefore those of us who are dyslexic and didn't notice any difference, now we, we can just be fixated upon that. We, of course, today, and the course of this whole convention, have been focusing on one little word, which is biblically friendly, one used by none other than Jesus himself in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 20 through 28, as you may recall, in that account, the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus, and they wanted to sit on the right hand and the left hand of Jesus in the kingdom of God. And Jesus reprimanded them and gave them a lesson, and gave us one too, of course, about greatness in the kingdom. You are great when you serve. That's the emphasis we have. We are to be servants, not celebrities. That brings to mind some of those individuals today in our culture, our pop culture, you might recognize, and if you don't, that's fine. The person on the left, obviously, is a baseball player. You don't have to be too much of a baseball player to know that that is Derek Jeter. The one in the middle is none other than one that is recognizable for all generations, multi-generations, is Oprah Winfrey, who probably has been around for decades now in talk shows and the like. The one next to the far right up there is Nick Walenda. I have become infatuated with him. He has uh, done the tight wire walk across the Grand Canyon, and being as claustrophobic as I am, and uh, that would go with heights as well, I just couldn't watch that on television or the Niagara Falls. I did pull it up on YouTube when he went to the Windy City and walked not only across it, but blindfold up in an incline, I believe, of night to equal to 19 stairs. I almost passed out just watching that YouTube. Nick Walenda, a devout Christian, but also a bit of a celebrity. Taylor Swift, to the right. Those of you who perhaps are younger will know her, and also, maybe now, the most famous Ole Miss fan in the world, none other than Katy Perry. I'm told she has as many as 50 million Twitter followers. So what? <laughs> and then he's already been identified this morning here as Mike McLemore, but that's Brad Pitt in the middle. <laughs> and you'll notice also those of you who follow pro football, synonymous with pro football, would be the Manning family. And that's none other than Peyton Manning. All of these are celebrities. Perhaps they have their place in pop culture. But in the biblical sense, we know that celebrity is not synonymous with servanthood. So, I want you to look at some servants just for a moment. Look at this picture. This is a collage of pictures of the saints behind the scenes, the one who gets the job done, those individuals who do the, if you will, in the common language, the grunt work in the kingdom of God. They do what they've been called to do as servants of our Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps the only one we could talk about with some renown is the upper right, that's Martha Myers, who gave her life on the mission field along with some other missionaries 12 years ago this December 26. Martha is from Alabama. And when we see this collage of pictures and put them alongside, juxtapose them alongside the celebrities, we identify with them more than others. Let me spotlight also some others who help us understand what it means to serve. I want to start with the S starting churches. Steve Walters is here somewhere. He's behind me. Here he is. I want you to meet a fine, outstanding leader among Alabama Baptists, one of those saints behind the scenes. He is starting a church at Pike Road, helping the church plant there in an area, those of you who live in Birmingham, 
It's a Hoover-like, newly, relatively newly incorporated city in Montgomery County, and we only have three incorporated cities, Montgomery and two others, one of them being Pike Road. Tell us a little bit about Pike Road and the future. Sure. It's, uh, it's an area to the east of Montgomery, and uh, if you're going up 85 out of Montgomery and you look to your right, there's a lot of trees there now, but behind those trees, it's just a massive number of subdivisions, very fast growing. And at this point, it, it looks like uh, between uh, 2001 and today, it's seen about a 1,600% increase in the population there. My, and how's the church doing as you look toward the future? I know it's in its embryonic state. It's doing pretty well. In fact, our goal is to reach the unchurched and to reach the lost. And, and that's one of those, those things that I, I'm really glad that I get to talk about that here because I can really covet your prayers at, at this time to do that. But as we do that, we've seen lives already begin to be touched and plugged into ministry. It's our goal to see these folks moved immediately into the mission field. I would imagine, then, you're glad to have these Alabama Baptists praying for you and partnering with you. I am. This is, a, this is a great time for me. As I told Lamar Duke earlier, I sure am grateful that I get all these pastors together to pray for me. So I'm grateful for you. Thank you. And we're proud of you. Thank you, Steve. God bless you as you continue this work. Appreciate you. <laughs> he is for evangelizing the lost, and I'm looking for, yeah, here he is. I want you to meet Jacob. Jacob Pierce, he's a student. And uh, you tell us where you're a student. I know who, where you are, but you tell these folks where you are and maybe a little bit about the campus ministry there and about your opportunity to share your faith with those who are in the younger, the next, and up-and-coming generation of college students. I'm at the uh, University of Alabama at Birmingham. And uh, what, you, what you might not know about UAB is that it's the third most diverse school in the country. Um, and, and so uh, with that comes a, you know, a, a diverse background of, of faith. And uh, you know, when you think about uh, you know, just when you look at a college campus and, and you think about a, a group of students that uh, would, would definitely stereotypically be identified as a lost group, it would be the fraternity and sorority. So <clears throat> we do a lot of ministry through the BCM. We've had over 1,100 students. We did the math. Uh, that have been through our building just this semester. So I'm, I'm kind of giving you just a, a snapshot of, of one particular ministry we do, and that's to fraternity and sorority students. Um, <clears throat> but I want to tell you a story uh, about one student. His name is Derek, and he's in one of the fraternities that um, definitely lives up to the stereotype. And uh, our vision for Unite is the, the name of our Bible study that we do, is uh, to, to reach out and to, to find the remnant of believers in each and every fraternity and sorority and equip them and encourage them and support them to where they can demonstrate the love of Christ to their group. And so Derek is one of those guys, and he started coming last year and was really looking for just some community. And, um, you know, the, 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 the people at Unite, uh, you know, showed that to him. And, and uh, I believe that, that Derek made a uh, profession of faith, and uh, he, as, a, as a result of that has been a changed man. And he's, this year he started bringing... Uh, some of their, their newest pledges to, to unite and uh, has been Christ to his fraternity. Well, Jacob, we're proud of you. And don't you think this is a fine, articulate young man who's a witness for Christ? I am really <laughs> impressed. You make a big investment in the lives of collegiate students, college students, on the campuses across Alabama, as many as estimated to be 300,000 students in some fashion, junior college, senior colleges across our state. He's representative of one of them and one fine representative. And before I go, I would be remiss. You tell everybody who your campus ministry is. Bill Morrison. Good. Yeah. I'd also like to thank everyone uh, for supporting the cooperative program because without the cooperative program, the BCM wouldn't be possible. And uh, without the BCM, Unite wouldn't be possible. So thank you for your giving. Uh, it, the, the work of God has, uh, has definitely... Uh, brought that your your money and your support into fruition. So thank you very much. He's hired. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Volunteers on mission. We have an opportunity now to hear from one of our fine pastors slash DOMs. Jeff, come on up, man. That was your cue. Jeff Mann. Yeah, he's up. Yet yeah, revival is it? What did I say? Nope, I'm on the wrong one. Volunteers in mission. Come right. That R comes before B. You're right. Okay. I told you I was dyslexic. No wonder you paused. Okay, revitalization. 
and you have been instrumental in helping to revitalize a, a church, a churches up in the northeast part of our state in the Scottsboro area. Help us as we try to comprehend what all that means. We're part of a legacy church plan in Scottsboro, Alabama. Ridgedale Baptist Church existed for a number of years, had many troubles, ups and downs. The facilities, however, were relatively new, 15 years old, and a uh, tremendous facility. But they had reached a point of about nine uh, members left. Uh, the director of missions came alongside someone they trusted to be a catalyst and a coach and spoke truth and love with them to uh, help them honestly assess where they were at, pointed them to the kingdom, what could be, and then walked them through the process, very courageous on his part, on their part. And they have turned their facilities over to a new church. We are brand new, completely new, meeting in that facility. And having been a church planner in Florida, starting in apartments, uh, we greatly appreciate the resources that we've been give, given and blessed with. Thank you, Jeff, and we want you to know we're praying for you, and I want you to know I can spell serve. Thank you very much. Okay, volunteers and missions. Doug Ferris is an outstanding pastor in the northwest part of our state in Moulton Baptist Church, and I'm going to hold the microphone because he gets real excited, and um, he's going to tell you about what he has experienced briefly in Ukraine and the partnership and how it has transformed his church. Yeah, Muscle Shoals Baptist Church. Did I say, did I, what did I say? Molten. Did I say Moulton? Yeah. Muscle Shoals. What did I say? Did I? Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> Muscle Shoals Baptist Church. We, uh, a couple of years ago, through the Acts 1-8 Connections, we had the uh, opportunity to, uh, and we voted to become a connecting partner with our IMB missionaries, Tim and Donna Akers. Uh, we, uh, uh, they were on furlough in our association. They received a new assignment with an unreached people group in the Carpathian Mountains in western Ukraine. We sent uh, three of our church members, myself included, with a team of Alabama Baptists on a vision trip with him. We uh, scouted out a strategic place for him to live. We worked with unreach, uh, the unreached people group there and looked for opportunities for church planning. And, uh, and then we went back the next year and did some children's ministry and uh, medical missions in some of the villages where there are no churches. And it has really, as our church has gotten involved, it has revitalized our church. It's given us a fresh vision on missions. And we see things differently, not only across the world, uh, but right there in our area where we're located as well. Thank you. Boy, that was good. We did. It's like we, yeah, you did fine. And say with me, Muscle Shoals. Would you do that? Muscle Shoals. Okay. Thank you so much, Doug. You did a great job. Okay, Doug. Devin Corbett is an outstanding young student at the University of Alabama, and her dad is a director of missions as well. And her mom and dad have been dear friends. We got to know them years ago when they were in Troy. But you have had the opportunity to engage culture, cross-cultural evangelism and the like, identifying with those who are coming, not only internationally, but right here, for, for instance, the Mormon faith. Could you share a little bit about that? Well, first of all, I am a missionary kid. I became a Christian in West Africa. So the other cultures have always been a part of my awareness. But until I came to University of Alabama and became involved in BCM, I didn't realize that I could have a role in directly engaging those other cultures. So I became aware of first of international students. Um, I help with an English cafe where international students just come and they get free food and snacks and we just talk and we build relationships and have meaningful conversations. And Americans came too, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Americans who aren't Christians that are also seeking something. They're seeking these meaningful relationships, these meaningful conversations about what really matters in life. And I learned that through just basic topics like uh, marriage, family, tr fears, travel, money, um, we could share what God has done in our lives, who he is, why this matters, um, through our own stories. Um, and so the Day of Hope, um, this initiative in Tuscaloosa, where we helped with different projects, uh, we helped uh, build a deck for a lady who didn't have one. Um, and that night I came home to my apartment um, where my roommate was having a meeting with her Mormon ladies group, and I was not expecting this. <laughs> my arms were kind of noodly from all the hammering I was learning how to do that day. Um, thank you, Nate Young, for teaching me. And so I was uh, confronted with this other culture right there that looks a lot like our, our culture, but really isn't. 
and I was able to speak to them about what we believe and uh, share the gospel with them in a way that I wasn't expecting, and, and I didn't realize, uh, one girl said, I'd never heard this before like this, mm-hmm. and uh, that made me realize that was just like international students. They may come here, they may want to practice English, they may want to learn English, they may be invited in someone's home, they may not, they may make an American friend, they may make a Christian friend, they may not, they may have never heard the gospel the way we can tell it in our stories. And that was also something I learned um, in Brazil when we were sharing our stories. In fact, uh, Brazil was the first time I really learned how to share my testimony personally, and I realized that what God's in my life is, is really relevant in people's new ways. Tell us the event at Brazil. <laughs> The World Cup. Mm-hmm. Did you enjoy that? Yes, sir. Again, a very articulate student, fine young lady, and we're real proud of her. And thank you so much, sweetheart. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, if I can learn how to spell serve and not interpose molten and muscle shoals, we'll get through this. Serve Plus. I want you to put a plus in your mind because we're going to recognize Dr. Andy Westmoreland, and he and I are going to have an uncharacteristic, unplanned, unvetted, unrealistic. (coughs) No, 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 no. You got to come up here. I've already announced you. I've called you out. (coughs) Before we have our actual State Board of Missions presentation related to the budget and the like, I want to thank Dr. Westmoreland because he has helped us in terms of our being able to move to an equitable distribution with the cooperative program giving with our Southern Baptist Convention family and he has also volunteered and I, I do mean this volunteered to help in some other ways as we accelerate that and emphasize that in the future and that's your segue to tell us what we talked about. And I'll take the microphone because uh, I know that if you hold it down so low that I can speak into it, it would cramp your arm. I know that, (laughs) Dr. Lance. And I will also say that uh, purposefully, uh, I have not tried to rehearse everything I'm about to say this afternoon because I want to try to speak to you directly from my heart. And this is not the easiest thing for me to talk about, but um, I want to try to talk for just a couple of minutes this afternoon and explain something, and then also explain maybe what it does mean, what it doesn't mean. We come to this meeting every year, other meetings like this, and we celebrate the great work that God is doing through all of these lives, and we've heard wonderful stories here just over the last few minutes, compelling stories about what's happening in individual churches and then what's happening through gifts that come through the cooperative program that bless people near and far. We celebrate all of that and we are all grateful for all of it. And then we come to the hard reality that our gifts are not keeping up, that it's hard to make the state convention budget every year. I see this, you see it as well. And as Dr. Lance said, he didn't come to me and say, Andy, let's talk. It was none of that. No one came to me and said, you've got to do this or else. But as president of Sanford, I have to look at the same set of facts that you look at as you examine the budget. And I see the needs. We all see the needs. And I would say that while all of our ministries across the board have equal value, I have to admit, as President of Sanford, that all of our ministries do not have equal access to resources. I understand that. And so I can't, in good faith, look at this picture and leave these meetings year after year and say, well, we got ours, so the world's okay. I can't do that. I have agreed with 
Dr. Lance. And this is not something that you need to vote on. It'll be picked up at a future point as budgets develop. But I have agreed, and the executive committee of my board of trustees has agreed, that over a period of years, five, six, seven years, that Sanford will act unilaterally to reduce our allocation through the cooperative program by about half. In round numbers, that's about $2 million over that period of time. In round numbers, it will be somewhere between three and $400,000 a year less going forward. It's important to us to be able to plan realistically in agreement without theater involved, just looking at the numbers, putting those in the budget, making sense of all of that going forward. Rather than to sit back and wait for some kind of calamitous event to occur, I'm reminded of a, of a story that is credited to Lincoln where when he had two young boys and he was walking down the street in Springfield, Illinois with his boys and both of them were crying. A fellow stopped him and said, Mr. Lincoln, why are your two boys crying? And he said, well, I have three walnuts and each boy wants two. <laughs> we have more important things to do in Alabama Baptist life than to get to a point where we worry and we fight over who gets the walnuts. And so I'm saying now that we want to be a part of being ahead of all of this. And we want to help. That is not to say that we do not have our needs. And this is a step of faith that in some measure God will help us to replenish that that we are relinquishing. Because I can tell you that I deal with plenty of families who feel the pain every year of trying to pay for their sons and daughters to attend the institution where I serve. I sat in the food court at our university center three weeks ago with a mother and father and their son. And it was a gap of $1,583 for the semester. And they had not a clue where that could come from. By the grace of God, we're working with them, gifts from others. We'll help them get across the finish line by the end of the semester. But it's real. It's real in their lives. And so in no way am I saying just go on and don't worry about Sanford. We're going to be fine. I think that Sanford will be fine. But it's because I have faith in God that Sanford will be fine. <laughs> so, Dr. Lance, I want you to know that you have friends at Sanford University, people who are committed to this work, people who will be committed regardless of the money. We love you and we love Alabama Baptist and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is a statesmanlike servanthood kind of illustration of what it really means to be a partner in ministry. Thank you very much.